Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about, well, it's a four-parter. Let's get into it. Uh, so it says, hi Frederick, I'm working for the uh, for the company on the implementation, uh, for a company of, of an implementation of an ERP system for more than two years now. My job is mainly to migrate data between the old and the new system. I also worked on a few modifications for the new system. I had the opportunity to program business logic and UX a bit. Apart from that, I maintain the old system and support the users. I briefly deal with everything that the current situation requires. Excel, SSRS, system integrations, Windows. The main reason why I am tempted to take this job was the information uh, was the was that C sharp was a requirement. I thought it was a great opportunity to deepen my programming knowledge. Unfortunately, the reality is disappointing, and so I have a few questions that may be- become topics for a podcast series for your post- podcast series. By the way, I like them very much. Good, thank you. Uh, number one. All right, so we're going to have to split this out. So this is going to be number one. What if the requirements and scope of duties presented in the job advertisement and in the interview do not match what I have to face within my job? Instead of programming, I do a lot of other things that make me unable to be good at all of them. Well, so this here is uh, what, what, what basically what you're describing is uh, the surest, most surefire way for you to kill your career as a software developer. Uh, this this thing that you are exposed to. It's actually, I would say that this is probably the worst because um, there are usually two ways that software developers become irrelevant. Uh, the f- uh, first one is that they start taking on more administrative tasks. But the thing about that, which is very nice, is that if you start becoming more of a team leader or a project owner or sort of like uh, a PowerPoint person if you if you start doing more administrative stuff then at the very least you have a path forward you can move into something benefic- something that's kind of actually going to be a benefit to you which is mm, it's still IT related and you might become manager but if the other way is that you do a lot of things that are basically a support things, things that are there because the company that you're working for is shit at managing their technical debt and their internal um, internal state. And working with Excel and system uh, Windows and system integrations, etc., etc., what you're describing to me is literally, depending on w- where you work, either a tech support person or a user relationship or like a customer support person that is what you are and no one i can you, you won't even qual- like if you do that sort of work you won't even qualify to be called a software developer because software developers do not do the thing that you are describing software developers pro in for most people's definition they code application logic like they work in uh, as an example c sharp uh, if that is was part of the requirement and that's not what you're doing, well, then you're not a software developer. You're actually doing something different. And so this is where you kind of have to, I think that this is a skill that you have to figure out. Uh, some people are good at this. Some people are not so good at this. Uh, I have been accused lovingly of being a master of this. So I'll give you my thoughts on it. And this is not me speaking. That is my. These are my coworkers. So the thing that my coworkers have claimed that I am a master of is to identify what projects and what responsibilities to take and what to avoid. What that basically means is that uh, I have a talent for spotting what uh, when a project or a p- specific story is going to become a horror show that I own for the rest of my time at this company, or that is going to be a very risky thing for me to do, or something like that. That's not going to be. It's it's going to be a bad one, uh, and I'm also fairly good at figuring out what type of Extra, extra activities, extra responsibilities are good to pull in, to actually take on yourself, and things that you should not do. And that comes down to, like, I mean, this is not something that I always do, like, a conscious, like, I do it in a conscious way, because I have uh, done the first thing that you have to do, and that is to figure out what do you want to do? 
have you figured out what your long-term career goals are? Have you figured um, that you don't have to have an answer to that? It's just that you, what, what do you want to spend your time doing? An example, I actually, I was coaching one of my... Uh, one of my coworkers, because he asked me from some th for some tips, and I explained that uh, if your boss, because there was this position with a bit of a responsibilities and so forth, where the idea on paper, or that's what the management said, is that you are 80% a software developer, and then because they need someone to take care of some of the administrative stuff before with the salespeople and the product owner and the product manager and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, to be kind of a bit of a liaison, I told them. Uh, you uh, you should really think about what you want your long-term career to be here because if you take this job I can guarantee you that those 20% are going to turn into a hundred percent very very quickly and the reason why is because the ten the, the, the percent thing that is something that people do when they can't justify having well, that's a, it's a it's the biggest manipulation or mental mistake people make there's no such thing as 20 percent because if you have if you're 20 percent something the only reason they say 20 percent uh, is because they some feel like sometimes they need so like they, that's basically what they do they have they don't want to hire somebody to take care of the role that they're looking for so they want someone to take on the responsibilities of helping the non-technical stakeholders with whatever they are doing here's the kicker with that they all have meetings and schedules and customers that can't wait ever and how much time you spend on whatever their needs are depend has nothing they, there's no way to say you should just do that 20% because this customer needs the what the customer needs when they need it everything is scheduled everything is uh, has a meeting everything needs to be prepared until a certain date and the better you get at that, the more uh, the more critical you become to their success, which means that you do it more and more, and then it becomes a spiral, and all of a sudden you're doing it all. I promise you, uh, in most uh, what I find is that you find yourself doing that more than anything else. And sure, if you want to be a manager, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. That's actually exactly the thing you want to be doing. But if you want to be a software developer, it's really not the thing that you want to do. So what you're describing to me here is literally that exact situation. I think, as I said, it's even worse because you don't even have, you're not even building up a management portfolio or CV. You're building up a tech support person. And the unfortunate part about tech support is that unless you're working, like, I mean, Tech support is a very hard, is a very tough job to transition between different positions uh, if you're just doing the regular stuff. I mean, you, if you have experience, that's great, but usually tech support is very, it's very company specific if you're not using one of the big systems, of course, and so forth. So what I want you to take away from this is that if the requirements on the job ad are different from what you're actually doing, that is very unfortunate, it does happen. And it, at the end of the day, the thing that you should focus on is always to benefit your career. Because, and I know this sounds bad, but it's not, it, you remember, the company does not give two shits about you and your future. The reason why they don't is because at the end of the day, if you leave and you want to find another job or anything like that, they're not going to do that for you. They are hiring you to do a specific job and you have to answer the question, are the things that you're doing at that job things that are setting you up for long-term success or are these things that are going to keep you in place? They're not being malicious, they're not like they're being a company, they're hiring you to perform a service for them. But that service is also your education in many ways. And if it's not the education that you want, you need to transition. And you should always know that it is a bit of a talent to get good at figuring out what moves to make, what was going to have what impact. It's uh, Some developers do it really well and some don't. But if you get the knack for it, you can start to figure out when it's time to take on a certain responsibility or when it's time to say, no, you know what, it's better that somebody else does it. Because you start to th figure out 
well, if I start doing this thing 10%, that's going to turn into 90% very quickly. Or if I do this thing here, it's actually going to set me up for more responsibilities within an area that I really want to be a part of. My favorite saying is, if you really want to do something, it has to be your job to do that thing. 9 to 5 or whatever hours you're working, that is the thing that you're going to get good at. And if that's if you want that to be C sharp and you're not doing the 9 to 5 C sharp type of things, then that's not going to happen for you. So you need to start thinking about switching uh, to another company. Have a great day.